We're here today with something a little different, pun intended. I'm taking a look at this mini bake oven sized 3D printer. Uh, kids, you may not remember the mini bake oven, but uh, those older in the crowd will totally, totally get that reference. And that, that was just the first impression that I had was mini bake when I saw this thing. This is the Antina Tina 2 3D printer. It's right there, Antina Tina 2 S version 10. Uh, my first impression was this thing was a gimmick, but I thought I'd check it out anyway, and I'm kind of happy I did. This Antina Tina 2, that's hard to say fast, comes fully assembled out of the box. It has an automatic bed leveling system, which is surprising in something this small. Um, that's nice for beginners or people that are lazy like me and don't want to fiddle with a bunch of knobs. And It does have a removable magnetic build plate. It's pretty small, as you can see. Um, there's my hand. The build plate did claim to be flexible. I find that because of its size, I was very hesitant to try to bend it when I did a benchy. We'll look at the benchy here in a minute. So that there for right now. So this thing's really compact and lightweight. Um, I didn't convert this to millimeters, so forgive me, but it's 8.3 by 8.3 by 11.4 inches externally. Weighs about three kilograms. I mean, it's got a good amount of heft to it. You do have the dual Z-axis rails, gives you some nice stability. So one of the things I really liked about this was it's pretty easy to use. You do have this control knob up here. You do have this, it's pretty intuitive. It clicks and then, you know, you push it to confirm a choice. I will find when you rotate it, sorry, I don't have it plugged in right now. Sometimes you'll feel it click two or three times before it actually registers. Um, it does come with the micro SD card. The micro SD card did have a slicer on it that you could install on Windows. There's instructions on how to get one for Mac on the website. They do have QR codes here for support and for their cloud app if you wanted to do cloud printing. It's got a warning about the slicer that using another slicer may damage the printer, etc. Uh, it comes with some PLA. They say it'll print PLA, PLA Pro, and they claim it can do TPU, but it does give you a little bit of flexibility there. Um, it came with a spool of PLA. You'll see that in a little bit, which I did the benchy with. It snap, crackled, and popped a lot. It, it was wet. I could have popped it in the dryer, but I was just kind of in a hurry. And if we look at the benchy here, I don't know how you can see that, but there's a lot of stringing going on and it kind of has a gross feel. And in my experience, it has nothing to do with the quality necessarily of the PLA that they sent, but it had just absorbed some humidity over time. It kind of has that like styrofoamish kind of feel, if you know what I mean, if you've ever experienced that. And you can see down here, it was kind of not the best with the thing. And I don't necessarily think that's the printer's fault. I think that was just wet filament. Uh, I did dry the filament out for eight hours at 50 C and we're gonna do another print with it to see if that improved the quality. And we'll jump to that here in a minute. But let's talk about the printer just a little more. It took an hour and 45 minutes, almost exactly, I think like a minute over, to print this Benchy. So this isn't gonna win races and it's not gonna be the fastest printer. For the filament, you know, it's got this little holder here. You put the spool on and it even warns you here if the filament's damp or dusty, you know, be careful. And the use of third party filaments is prohibited. Obviously you, you could probably use your own filaments. Just make sure you got the temperatures, like, you know, the temperatures and stuff. But uh, yeah, they recommend you use their filament, you know, just to load it. When this came, this was not attached. Oh, I guess you can't actually see that. When this came, the tube wasn't attached, so you just attached the tube. It was inside the machine. I pulled it out, put it here. They did have some kind of yellow test filament in there from the factory that extruded out, and then the white extruded out a bunch, and then I was ready to go. So pros and cons. Again, really compact design. I like this thing. Like, I think this would be cool for like kids, for like little kids. Uh, or if you're in a dorm or something and you don't have a lot of room, but you kind of want to play with 3D printing and see if it's for you and, you know, for twice this, you could get a full-size one that has more features and stuff, but sometimes you don't have a lot of space. Say you're in a tiny house and you just want to print little knickknacks. Like, I think this thing's going to be all right. Um, obviously, I haven't used it long-term. From my experience so far, like, yeah. So the cons, the build volume, like, that's the biggest con. You're doing 100 by 120 by 100 millimeters. Like, you're not going to do much more than that. Uh... You know, that I think that's about three inches is what you can do on one of those dimensions. Also, you know, it doesn't have the heated bed. Um, it's slow. <laughs> like, it's really slow. Hour and 45 minutes for that. Let me move this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this up and we'll just print one of the other files that came on it. So here we are. We have it running. And you can't see that screen very well, but see, 
I have to click this a bunch of times sometimes. I'm trying to load the filament. So it's not the most responsive controls, but it gets there. So we're gonna have it warm for the PLA. And then I've just put their little spool that they came with. And then I'll feed this in here and stuff when it asks me to, and then we'll get a print going. Yeah, so that took, I don't know, a minute and a half and it got up to temperature and now it's purging a little bit of filament. It does purge an alarming amount of the filament before it stops. I really don't know why. So <clears throat> this is how much it purged. It took about two, two and a half minutes. <clears throat> okay, so I've washed the plate, put a little bit of new glue stick down. We're going to continue, come out here to the menu. Let's see, print from TF card. Come on, come on. There you go. So the ship route last time, which is just Benchy. Let's try Rabbit. It actually tells you the times here. Let's find something quick. How about a frog? Oh, there's more. Wow. It's got something on here that's three hours. Well, we did a Benchy, so let's do an anchor. That's one hour, 14 minutes. And it's just the G code file. Density 10%, layer height 0.2 millimeter, filament PLA, print. And there she goes. So we'll come back in about an hour and 20 minutes when this is done. Let me get a little more room there. And yeah. Please don't mind my labored breathing. I just went up and down the basement stairs three or four times carrying heavy stuff. Uh, here we are printing. If it's doing like the Benchy, what it does is it puts down a layer and then comes on and does other layers. Cause the Benchy peeled off a layer real easy and then a layer was left, which allowed it to do that. So looks like it's doing the exact same thing this time. But yeah, so we've got about an hour and 10 minutes left. So Tina here says she's about 52% done. The menu kind of changes a lot. But so far the anchor's looking better than the Benchy did. Um, without touching it, I'd say the texture's gonna feel a lot nicer. And again, I only did that for eight hours at 50 uh, Celsius to just dry it out a little. And it's looking better but we'll see when it comes off. All right, so the anchor finished a few minutes ago. I just kind of let it cool. I was watching YouTube. Um, I'm gonna pry it off here real fast, and then, well, let's see if we can just pop it. Nope, the whole plate came off. Okay, let me get a, a hand free. So, like I said, on the um, Benchy, that's not really a skirt, that's not really a brim. It's pretty thick, and then this prints down onto that, so like, I don't know, maybe that's a setting they just used when they sliced it or whatever, but it just seems a little wasteful of the material. But that popped off pretty good. It definitely needs cleaned up. So I'm starting to think it's just the filament in general. It does feel nicer than the Benchy after I heated it a bunch, but we're gonna go against what the sticker says and we're gonna try some other filament that I have. This is a silk PLA, so this might get it real interesting. But this is rose red and sky blue. I, I wouldn't necessarily call that sky blue unless you're talking about upper atmosphere, but I digress. I'm not gonna clean the plate. Um, I'm curious to see what this will do with the imprint of the last thing on there, the anchor. Once this spews out a seemingly inappropriate amount of filament, we'll go ahead and get that model going and I'll just jump back to while that's in progress. So we're at 48% now. We've got about an hour and seven minutes, I think. But let me show you what I did here. So since this doesn't want to turn because it's so thick, it's thicker than the thing, and I didn't want to like make something real quick, uh, I imagine you could pretty easily print up a spool, just a couple skate bearings and a rod, you know, make your own thing. What I'm doing is I'm just undoing five or six loops, and then every 15 minutes or so I come back in here and unspool a little bit more because it was getting stuck and, you know, just want this to finish. I will say, this is a file that came on the SD card here, and... You can see the seam runs right up the front right leg. You you would have thought that they would have like put the seam on the back or something since they prepared this G-code. Well, it's done. Uh, looks pretty good. I'm gonna get it off there real quick and we'll take another look at it. Just popped right off this time. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this thing. Again, it's like a 100 millimeter uh, build area, but like, pretty cool. Little dragon. Little boat, little anchor. That's been the Antina, Tina 2S. Um, I'm not sure who this printer is really for. Maybe someone in a dorm, but yeah, there you have it. 
it, it definitely prints. And the quality is better with this filament. This filament still isn't the greatest quality that I used, but it's just, you know, something I had on a small roll. And, I mean, it worked pretty well. Um, the seam's in a little bit of a weird place, but, you know, you could fix that. And otherwise, I am very happy, and I really like this combination of color. Anyway, see you guys in the next video.